I've been eating a fruit-based, mostly raw vegan diet for about six years now. Over time, I've seen many people try this way of eating, but only very few people actually succeed, while most people struggle and constantly fall back into old habits. Today, I'll share with you the five most common mistakes people make when they try a raw vegan diet. Number one is not eating enough. Number two, following gurus instead of following your own body. Number three is falling into the detox or cleansing mindset. Number four is stressing out too much and taking it all too seriously. And number five is focusing too much on food and forgetting about all the other aspects that create a healthy lifestyle. Before we dive into the five mistakes, I quickly want to let you know that I just launched the Intuitive Health Academy, a monthly membership which includes our private IHA community with all the other members, bi-weekly Q&A calls to answer all of your questions, and a full 12-week coaching program that helps you transition to a mostly or fully raw vegan diet and lifestyle. So, are you ready to overcome your cravings, have more energy and experience next level health? Come join us and visit intuitivehealth.org or click the link down below in the description. So now let's talk about the five mistakes and how to avoid them. Let's talk about the most common mistake people make, which is not eating enough. And this happens because whole plant foods, generally speaking, have a much higher water content and less calories for the same amount of volume. So what do I mean by that? If we compare a watermelon to a burger from a fast food chain, for example, then to eat, let's say, five, six, seven hundred calories of watermelon, we need to eat a huge amount of watermelon, which is difficult to get in for most people when they start out eating more fruits and eating more raw foods. But a burger, you know, you only need this amount of food in volume to get in six, seven, eight hundred or more calories. So this is why we need a step-by-step -step transition. Most people's digestive system simply isn't ready to eat enough food, to, to get through enough food so you feel satisfied and you feel nourished and get in not only enough calories but also enough nutrients. What often happens is people eat until they are full or satisfied but often, you know, people that come from a standard American diet or just a normal diet what normal meaning what most people do and they start eating more fruit they just eat a few pieces of fruit and then they are full because their stomach isn't used to a bigger amount of food bigger volume of food and then after just half an hour of eating some fruit they get extremely hungry and then they have cravings or they say oh i need to eat something and that way you know it leads to cravings it leads to eating something that people don't want and then they get frustrated, why doesn't it work, and so on and so on. So this is why I always emphasize a step-by-step -step transition, getting your digestive system ready for more foods and working your way up gradually. For example, with my clients that I worked together with over the past three years, and also in IHA, I always teach starting off with breakfast, first of all, establishing the habit of eating fruit for breakfast. And increasing the amounts, even in the beginning, if it's just a few pieces of watermelon or a few peaches or whatever fruit you have available, two, three bananas, if that's what you, it's all you can eat, then it's fine. Start off with that and then just move on with your day. But you will see that quite quickly after just one week or two weeks, your digestive system will already be able to handle more fruit and also you will be craving more fruit it will feel more natural for you to eat bigger amounts of food. And this is, brings me to my next point within eat not eating enough, which is people often have limiting beliefs about food. Many of us have been told, oh, you should limit your food, um, food amount or food intake because people are used to eating things that are not really healthy for us. So we often have this belief that oh, we should limit our consumption of this product or this amount of food 
because it's not good for us. But when we talk about whole plant foods, which are nourishing for our bodies, fruits and veggies and greens and nuts and seeds, all of these foods, they nourish our body. And when we talk about that, we shouldn't restrict at all. Instead, we should think and start thinking about abundance. Because the beautiful thing is about a raw food lifestyle, a raw vegan lifestyle, is that we can eat until we are satisfied, until we are full. And we can even, in terms of calories, we can even eat more than we are used to and still lose weight or get into our optimal shape and feel good because we are not calculating how, oh, now I ate so many calories, I have to stop, or this, is, this doesn't happen on this lifestyle, on a whole foods plant-based diet or on a raw vegan diet, this doesn't happen. We think in abundance and leave restriction out of the door and leave it behind. Let's dive into mistake number two, which is following gurus instead of following your own body. When I first started out, on a whole foods plant-based diet and then a raw vegan diet, I started listening to many people online and I put them on a pedestal. I thought, you know, these people have it figured out. They have been raw vegan for many, many years. They are coaching people online and they must have all the answers. This is how I looked up to them. And the problem is that nobody, first of all, has all the answers. And many people, they make it seem like they have all the answers and they make it seem like that their approach is for everyone and what they teach or what they say everyone has to do. This is the truth. And this is a big problem online, especially for people. Many people, when I started out, I felt insecure. I wasn't sure, am I doing it right or how should I do it exactly? So I started looking up to these people. But the problem is, while I learned a lot, while I learned a lot about my body, about health, and about a healthier diet and way of living, I'm not denying that, but I started to lose connection with my own body because instead of learning how to listen to myself and finding my own answers, experimenting with different foods, experimenting with different ways of eating, meal planning, etc., I just took the information I saw online from these gurus and I applied it to my own life and I tried to force it onto my life. But we can't forget that, yes, of course, we are the same species and we need quite a similar approach. All of us need a similar approach. We all have a species-specific diet and way of eating. But we come from a different background we have a different past, we ate differently, we think differently, we have a different mindset, we, have, we live in a different environment, we have different foods available, we live in different climate zones. So we can't just take what someone says online and apply it to our own life without experimenting and thinking critically about it. This is really, really important. All the information that you see online you should question it. You, you should, of course, you can apply it to your own life, experiment with it, but then see, does it work? Does it feel right? And only continue with what feels right for you, truly feels right for you. Especially when we move towards raw veganism, quite quickly it can turn into something dogmatic. For example, you need to eat low fat. You need to follow a 80-10-10 lifestyle. You need to do a juice cleanse or a juice fast. You need a colon cleanse. You know, there are so many things that people say you need to do in order to get healthy, which from my experience with myself, with the clients I work together with, and with many long-term raw vegans who actually live this kind of lifestyle that I talk to on my travels that I met in my own life, many people say that most of the things they heard online, they actually didn't work for them and they created more problems than they had before. And this is why I'm such, you know, I'm so passionate about a sustainable step-by-step -step transition because this is what people need. People don't need to go from one extreme to the other and then just create more imbalances in their life. People just need to start slow and gradually. 
Imagine you want to run a marathon, for example. You're not just going to run 20, 30 kilometers or miles the next day when you didn't train for it at all or when you are not even a runner. You know, you work your way up gradually. And this is how I also see the diet and the lifestyle. We start with fruit for breakfast, move on to lunch. You know, we always talk about the mindset. We need to take into consideration so many aspects in our lifestyle to make it work and to find a solution that works for us in our own life. This brings me to my third point, which is falling into the detox or cleansing trap or mindset. And this is what I experienced myself. This is, it was directly connected to the last point following gurus. As I just explained, many people online say, you need to do a juice cleanse. You need to do a long juice fast to clean your colon. Uh, everyone has parasites and this is where the cravings come from. And this is why we need to do fasting and taking herbs and cleansing ourselves. And it almost, how I portray it, but how it felt for me when I came across that information and what people shared online, it all comes from fear and anxiety about there's something wrong in my own body. There are these parasites and there are these toxins that I need to clean out. And for sure, I don't even deny that we have toxins in our body and we have stuff in our body that shouldn't be there from environmental toxins, from the food we've been eating. Many different aspects, of course, make our species quite unhealthy. If we look at it, then chronic diseases, not only old people get them at this point, even young people, newborns have chronic diseases that 20, 30, 50 years ago just elderly had. So of course there is truth to it. But does that mean we should you know, live our life in fear and anxiety and try to fight with our own body and try to force ourselves to clean ourselves out and, you know, fall into this detox mindset of excessive cleansing and fasting. I've seen, for some people it works, I've seen that, but for many, many people who I've talked to from my own experience and also with my clients, it mostly created more issues than they had before. It made them unhealthier than they were when they started out and when they ate you know, a normal standard diet. And this shouldn't be, we shouldn't feel weaker and get super skinny and just don't feel good in our body anymore when we can actually just start eating healthier. Let's say for example, someone who eats fast food every day would we actually advise them to do a juice cleanse or, or do a colon cleanse or something like that before they start eating healthier? Not really, right? We would just tell them, start eating healthier and just change out the fast food burger for a healthier alternative and then work your way up. Just start eating more fruits, more veggies, more greens, more whole foods and get rid of the junk food. There is no need to do this excessive cleansing. Yes, in some instances, I'm not denying that sometimes it might be applicable for some people who have severe chronic health issues, they have cancer, they have you know some diseases in a late stage and they really need to you know, heal themselves as quickly as possible. It might be helpful to do a juice cleanse. It, it might be, or some water fasting or a fruit fast or something. It might be helpful, but for the majority of people, it is better to just simply start eating healthier and transition gradually. You might have already realized that all of these different aspects and mistakes are connected with each other. So the fourth point being not taking it too seriously. I know when we look at the world and when we be become aware of what's going on with the diet, with the healthcare system, with our governments, with, with nature, everything that is happening in the world, yes, there are many problems. But it doesn't help us if we constantly focus on the problems, what's going on, what's going wrong, what is wrong with my body, what is wrong with my diet, why are so many people sick? If we constantly focus on this, 
This is what we will attract in our daily life. It doesn't mean we should avoid all of it and we should look away. But the best thing we can do in this situation is to accept it, integrate it, accept the reality, how it is, but then focus on the solution. So not out of fear or anxiety or pressure because so many things are going wrong, but because we actually want to move into a better alternative. We want to create a better future for ourselves. This is the best focus we can have in our life. And I understand that sometimes it might be difficult because we actually envision a better life for ourselves, a different reality. For example, for myself, I want to buy some land, I want to grow my own food, I want to live surrounded by like-minded people, I want to have fresh drinking water on my own land, I want to have all of these things. But does it help me to stress out about not being in that reality right now? Not at all. But I can use it as a motivation, I can remind myself on a regular basis that this is the goal I have, this is the vision I have for myself. But then I come back into the current moment and I just focus on the steps that I need to take to get there. Every day that's the best I can do and this is what I focus on. And this is the best you can do as well. Simply focus on what you can do right now, what is the step that I need to take to get to the next goal, to reach my goal, to reach that next step to get closer to the vision and the life that I desire for myself. And this brings me to my last point, which is fo focusing in general too much on food or too much on the diet. This happened to me when I started out on a raw vegan diet and I found out, wow, there is so much more there. I can feel so much better. I can do so much more for my health. And then I was laser focused on the diet And I forgot, I literally forgot about all the other aspects. And I thought, well, going to restaurants is toxic and unhealthy. I don't want to eat there anymore. My friends, they don't really resonate with me anymore. They don't want to eat this way. I don't resonate with them anymore. I can't meet them anymore. I can't go out and do fun stuff. I literally was only focused on cleansing, on healing myself. And this is how I actually created the opposite reality because I was so focused on only this one aspect that yes, in many aspects or in many ways, I did, I did it right, but I forgot about all of these different aspects that create a healthy lifestyle. And this is so important to stress. I see many, many people make this mistake. They disconnect themselves from their friends, from their family, they feel lost, they start feeling lonely, they start feeling disconnected. And this way, this is the fastest way to, you know, create more problems or make ourselves unhealthier than before. This is something not many people are aware of when they start eating more raw foods, because it opens you up. It opens you up to a new reality. You will become more aware of what is going on around you, what is going on with your friends, at your job that you might not like, also with yourself, things that you want to change. Many of the things that are not in alignment with how you want to live your life, you will become instantly aware of them because raw foods make you so much more aware and so much more connected. So, It is not directly the case that you become disconnected. It is just that you become aware that there always was this kind of disconnection in your life. And now you need to relearn how to actually connect and actually have the connections with other people, with nature around you. And there might be things that are not easy to fix or change right away. If I think back years ago when I was working in a vegan restaurant, I felt misplaced. I felt like I don't belong there, but I needed the money. I needed to do it at the time. But at the same time, I wanted to have a different reality. So this is something that you need to take into consideration and become aware of that 
especially when you move towards a mostly or especially a fully raw vegan diet, you will become super aware, you'll be, <laughs> become even hyper aware of what is going on around you and the things that are not in alignment with you anymore. And this can become difficult and this is why I say, again, I can't stress this enough, I always say this, a step-by-step -step transition. Yes, of course, we can change our diet quickly, but does our mindset, our emotional state, does it all get along with the quick changes we make in our diet? This is actually the difficult part and this is one of the biggest reasons why people fall back into old habits because they can't handle that awareness. They can't help or handle the emotions that come up when they become more aware and when they start feeling more and when they start reconnecting with themselves. So if you want to connect with like-minded people who eat a similar way, who are on the same journey as you are, then I want to welcome you to the Intuitive Health Academy. We have our private IHA community space where you connect with other like-minded people, other members inside of IHA. We have the bi-weekly Q&A call, so whenever you have a question about the diet, about how to do it, maybe about your mindset, about your lifestyle, whatever it is, I will answer your question right away. And also you'll get access to the 12-week program that helps you transition gradually, step by step, as I mentioned it many times here in this video. If you have any further questions or want to have more information, just visit intuitivehealth.org or click the link down in the description below. That's it from my side for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.